So here we are, out in the world, out in my, my office. Check out that view, yo. Check out that view. Time, time to do an office edition of what's on my shelf, what's on my bookshelf. Uh, there's a lot of books here. Um, I think the next episode is going to be really good, but we're going to get started with some ones that are... Well, actually, the ones that are sitting on my desk, but they're not... Um, I don't know. Well, you'll see for the, the first one here. Uh, I haven't really, uh, I haven't really read it all that much. Um, so we got <laughs> surprise, surprise, a book on K theory, uh, eponymous name of my channel. Actually, I have nothing. I've, I've, I've barely looked at this book. I really don't have much to, to tell you because I, I don't know about it, um, pretty much at all, uh, except. Well, what can I say? Uh, bot periodicity, cool theorem, cool theorems there. Look it up. Uh, vector bundles. I once once learned about clutching theorems. Um, yeah, that's about it. Noth nothing much to say there. Uh, but I like that the book has historical notes in it, so that's promising for interesting stuff down the road, I guess. Uh, so that's it for that one. Um, what else do we have? I have a working draft of a paper that I printed out to help make edits. Um, but let's see, let's see. Okay, here's another one I haven't read much of. <laughs> uh, but I've used this for reference a little bit. Representation Theory of Semi-Simple Groups by Knapp. Um, uh, what have we got going on here? Yeah, so scope of the theory... Uh, yeah, basic stuff, some concrete representation theory of SU2. So, so real and complex groups. So like I normally work with uh, piadic stuff, but uh, here I'm talking about, or, well, I, I've referenced this book because I've needed to know things about the real representation theory. And like, uh, I didn't have this book in my master's, but I did do some real representation theory there. And uh, there's actually some papers that uh, you know, connect um, connect some of the representation theory of um, real groups and piadic groups. There's some interesting stuff there, like for GLN, um, and in other cases as well. But so um, I've referenced it for that, but honestly, have not have not looked at this book yet very much. Um, it's definitely on the to read list. Another book that I picked up uh, and have not looked at a ton. Um, really would be great to read one day. Maybe um, I don't know, bring it, bring it on a plane or something, and be a good read for it for the plane. Uh, but this book, uh, uh, contributions to the founding theory of transfinite numbers by Cantor. Uh, so it's got this actually a very long introduction. Uh, like half the book is an, an introduction. Um, but it's uh, explaining, is there even a table of contents? Yeah, yeah, so so article one doesn't start until page 85. The rest of it is, is all introduction. Um, but it's actually sort of like the early papers of Cantor um, first expressing the ideas of like different sizes of cardinality. So th this is an important piece of, of math history um, here. Um, but what's really cool I didn't know about before is that actually he came across it when he was investigating um, like analytic functions and like meromorphic functions and uh, looking at um, the poles of these functions and asking you know because you can have an isolated singularity or you can have you can have countably many. Um, say like a meromorphic function, I believe you're allowed to have countably many singularities as long as they don't congregate. So, so like they're all isolated points in the topological sense. Um, but then you start asking, like, what if there's functions with uncountably many um, um, poles? And so I believe his original... Um, that's where it originally, where it, it was inspired from, actually. He was, he was investigating poles of functions. Um, so, yeah. Next one. I've looked at it a little bit. Introduction to Affine Group Schemes. Uh, classic book. I mean, 
this is probably a book you should look at a little bit if you're doing, uh, you know, representations of, of algebraic groups and related things. Uh, so let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, basic stuff about uh, affine group schemes. So, you know, we're doing things in a functor of points um, kind of language for schemes. Uh, which is also really important because, like, when you're studying representation theory of, of matrix groups, like, you'll want to do some, some base change stuff. Um, yeah, so I haven't gotten too deep into uh, the weeds of this, but uh, certainly I need it, you know, for my research. Um, oh, someone was asking about descent theory um, uh, in a previous stream. So there we go, descent theory computations stuff about exact sequences and and whatnot um, yeah so this definitely this sort of stuff comes up as well because in my research uh, one needs to know about um, a group and uh, well a group what a stupid thing to say <laughs> uh, one looks at um, uh, so you start with a, some sort of like uh, Okay, it's, it's a reductive, connected reductive group, but just think about some sort of matrices over a field. And um, over an algebraically closed field, you know, it's entirely determined by its root system. But then you might ask over some non-algebraically closed subfield, what are all the, we call them forms, sort of partners of those groups over the subfields um, that correspond to that root system. Um, we actually zoom in a little more, we look at particular kinds of forms, but uh, it is important and, and this is one sort of way to uh, get, get into that is, is through this book. Um, okay, another one I really haven't looked at at all. <laughs> I promise you the, the last two uh, in today's video, the next two, which will be the last two, are ones I've actually um, looked at. And then, and then next week we'll talk about some, some real good stuff. But this is just a, a reintroduction. So uh, here's here's one uh, extensions of rings and modules. Um, yeah, again, I, I flip this open from time to time when I'm at my desk and I need to take a break from what I'm supposed to be thinking about. And I mean, what to what to say? Um, oh, damn! There's some cool stuff. Cardinal numbers. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't I haven't looked at this. Uh, yeah, injectivity, something, something. To, yeah, to be honest, I just grabbed this book because it was one of those free books people were giving away, but uh, nothing in here has seemed super inspiring to me um, yet. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's all I can say. But now let's move on to an absolute classic. Um, if you care about... Uh, algebraic topology and or differential geometry, this is a book you need to read. Uh, Bought and Two's Differential Forms in Algebraic Topology. Awesome book, awesome book, awesome book. Um, again, this is something I've definitely used to learn from. Uh, I've not read it cover to cover, uh, but um, so definitely this is a great introduction to Durham theory and Durham cohomology and uh, differential forms. Uh, very, very good book for this. So I think somewhere in the first couple pages here, uh, let's see. Uh, give me a second here, see if I can find it. But uh, it talks about sort of like Durham cohomology of manifolds and it um, and it expresses the oh yeah 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 so here's here's this is an awesome thing gradient curl and divergence um, is expressed in terms of uh, differential operators in Durham cohomology so and this is like early in the book this is uh, page uh, fourteen also damn this you know how like old books they're I think it's their glue. <laughs> It smells so good. Uh, find yourself an old copy. It smells good. Um, so yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff happening uh, early on in the book. Um, what else can we say here? Let's go back to our table of contents. Uh, yeah, so great stuff happening early on. 
uh, um, I guess I get a little less familiar with some of these things. Like, Tom isomorphism is something that's come up for me a lot in a bunch of different places. I've never, I've just never sat down and learned it properly. Um, and then I guess the big one also is another thing, like, I really should know how to do this by now in my life, but uh, I've never fully understood spectral sequences. Um, but they're, they're really important. They've just never been important enough for me personally yet. Uh, to sit down and, and put in the time to learn it properly. Um, yeah, so then we get, uh, um, you know, you even get a little bit of homotopy, like there's cool stuff, you know, about using, like, characteristic classes and whatnot. Computation of, of pi 4 of S3, I mean, that's that's a crazy thing, right? So, like, I think I mentioned before, you know, you compute, well, maybe not this one, but, like, well, maybe this one at, 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 at some point, but, like, you know, you compute a homotopy group of a sphere, that, that's an annals paper for sure. So, um, and then characteristic classes, um, definitely a super cool thing. I've sort of done this from the, I think they take more of the synthetic approach. So they define churn classes of line bundles and then extend that to arbitrary vector bundles. Whereas the churn theory I used was more of the um, analytic approach where you construct churn characters from uh, from connections, so uh, ooh, and the search for the universal bundle—that's that's really cool. Basically, um, yeah, look up look up the universal bundle. That's an awesome thing. So, anyways, this this is an amazing book. Um, highly, highly recommend to anyone vaguely interested in these topics. Uh, I mean, it's an absolute classic. Should be on your shelf for pretty much any geometrically uh, minded mathematician. Uh, I would say. So finally, uh, this will probably be the final one for today, but finally on quaternions and octonions. Um, absolute, another classic of Conway uh, and Smith. Love what they did with the, the letterings here. Um, this one I bought myself, actually, uh, many, many years ago um, because, well, there was, um, I mean, I follow... Uh, you know, John Baez's um, uh, This Week in Mathematics. I mean, I don't think he actively keeps up with it anymore. I'm not totally sure. But he wrote the uh, introduction. He wrote the preface to this book. And I think I read the... Is it the preface? Yeah. Wait, John Conway? Wait, there's an article in here early on that he wrote. I guess it's not the preface. But um, anyways, he wrote some sort of introduction to this book. And uh, I absolutely loved it. And he mentioned that it was for this book, and so I went and got this book. Um, so, yeah, starts off talking about complex numbers, talks about um, different kinds of, you know, Gaussian integers, Kleinian integers, quaternions, different sort of number systems. Um, yeah, all, all sorts of neat things there. Uh, Hurwitz uh, integral, quaternions, octonions, um, sort of goes through all of these ideas. And then there's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it gets, it gets fancier uh, towards uh, later parts, right? It talks about the connections with the, with the E8 lattice. Um, uh, what else is there to say? Yeah, reading mod to, yeah, get, gets into fancier stuff later on. But um, uh, one thing I was gonna say. So there's this there's this person. Oh yeah. So the maps the maps L uh, L X R X and B X. So I once made this video. I think did I make just a video on it. I think it was like a was it a short? No, I don't think I made any shorts. But it was a short video. And this person complained that I basically said something uh, super trivial. And it is trivial, but I'm in love with this idea. Well, the idea is that um, if you have some sort of uh, notion of, of like multiplication uh, on, on some set, right? Some sort of binary operation of multiplication, then uh, if you take an element, if you fix some little x in x, uh, you can define an operator given by left multiplication, right? So you just send an element uh, to the left multiplication by x. And um, 
and there's just this very interesting, I mean, to me, I think, it, like, yes, it's super trivial, but I think it's also sort of fascinating is that uh, the statement that for all x and y in x, that the operators of left multiplication and right multiplication uh, commute, uh, this is equivalent to the operation being associative. Um, and it's such a like one line proof, like like simple observation. But I mean, to me, some of these uh, some of these simple ideas are are the most beautiful. And some person you can find it in one of my videos in the comment section. Some person was like, "Oh, this is a trivial thing. It's like not even worth talking about, not even mentioning." Like blah blah blah. And first off, screw you. I like it. Uh, number one. And number two, actually, you, that fact is used in an essential way in this book uh, to, to do analysis on the octonians, which are non-associative. So, um, screw that person. Uh, yeah, anyways. So, fantastic book on quaternions and octonians by uh, John Conway and Derek Smith, the late... Uh, John Conway, mega goat, mega legend. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, anyways, well now you've got uh, now we've got another uh, episode in the logs, so you can take those recommendations and uh, you can go start proving theorems from these books.